today I'd like to show you how to have a little bit of fun with some squares. So I'm going to show you how to make a unit like this and I can see that you're looking at me thinking she's finally lost it. But let me assure you there is a little bit more to it than just this. It's a lot of fun it, and, and it will be revealed as we go. So in order to make this I've actually used some five inch squares but it could be any size square but you need two well strictly speaking you don't even need two but to do exactly what I've done I've used two grey squares and a red square so I've got my two grey squares and a red dotty square um, you can do it with other colour combinations but I'll talk a bit about that afterwards so in the meantime we need an iron as well so I've got three five inch squares but as I said it could be any size square and this is just convenient for me. So I need to fold my squares so that the right side is showing two of the, the two same colour squares, in this case, my two grey squares need to be pressed in half. Be careful, because we're pressing it onto a diagonal or a bias, just be careful that that doesn't stretch as you press it, because the diagonal is quite stretchy. So a little bit of care taken. And have it so that it's as accurate as you can get it, so that all the edges are sitting nicely together. I had great fun working this out. Um, I, I believe actually now that I've done it that there are similar things around but when I first started doing this I hadn't seen it anywhere and I was really wanting to create something where some colour popped through in the middle of a square and this is what I came up with so I'm pretty excited with the fun that you can have with this. So what I've got now is my red square underneath and then my two folded now triangles um, sitting on top as accurately as you can get them you may want to couple, pop a couple of pins in just to hold them in place we are going to do a little holding stitch just so that things don't move because I'm actually just going to cut just stitch right across the little corners the two opposite corners just to hold those you could do it at the other corners as well if you wanted to and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'll just pop a little stitch just in the in the seam allowance area, right across the corner there. So it's not meant to do anything except hold those edges together. And we'll do the same at this other end. Try and keep your points so that it's still staying as a square. Um, it's fairly important. You don't want things moving around too much. So just in that seam allowance area, across the corner. There you see that didn't take long. I now have two of those things. So I don't really know if it's got a name because I, as I said I did work this out for myself. I now have two. How much fun is that? This can also be used for quilt as you go because I'm going to show you in a minute how we're going to make this really appealing. So I'll bring a couple of pins back because what happens now We've got this red square underneath, two squares on top, and we've got this slit in, in between. And because this is stretchy on the bias, you'll find that this can peel back in the centre. And if I pop a pin in there, you'll see what I mean. And we can peel this one back. And now we can stitch those down to make that unit so that you've got this nice looking thing. So what, what I had started doing when I first worked this out was I was wanting to make a little block called an orange peel which has this sort of shape of a wedge, uh, a curved wedge across a block but I didn't want to do it as an applique which it traditionally is done as I wanted it to be popping through from underneath and I came across the idea that I could do something with this so that's what I've done and that's what I'm going to do but rather than sew it now, when it's just on a flimsy square, I find that if you do it with the batting in as well, so you're quilting it as you go, that that's really uh, quite helpful. Because so what? So before you do all that, if you were joining them up together to make a quilt top, you'd have them all like that, and you'd position them because you can have this nice sort of chain thing going on. I'll show you it on a sample in a minute. Um, and you would just do your regular quarter inch seam allowance, so that all those points are going to meet in whatever direction that you're doing them or you could sash in between them um, but I'll just show you quickly how I would then go on from there so I've popped together something here just a small quilt top and here instead of just using one color I've used two colors and well and a third one in, in behind 
So instead of having the two grey triangles, I've got a dark triangle and one of these sort of orangey, browny triangles on all my units. And then I've moved them around. So at the moment we have kind of a fun looking half square triangle quilt, but shortly it's going to look a little bit different because we're going to let that other colour reveal itself in these lovely shapes. So I'll just do a little bit of the sewing to show you how that works. So no sashing, just joining these units together. And so you may find that if you're going to come through here and and do some of the quilting, we might, um, where should we go? Pop a couple of pins in to get started. So I'm going to come down one side and you can do this in rows across your quilt. Um, if you are doing a, a, a large quilt, you may find it easier to work in sections as you would perhaps normally do for quilting as you go. I've done a lap size quilt, which I did entirely like this. So if you pop a couple of pins just to hold back that and we can come all the way down one side and then we can turn around and come back the other side. So I'll just get started on that here. So I've got my walking foot on my sewing machine because that will help it feed nice and evenly because I've got the batting. It's already backed. It's ready to go as a quilt. Now you can do other quilting in the world as well afterwards, but this is a, a good way to get it started. So I'm just going to start at one of the corners right near the edge where my border is. I've folded this back and it gets wider as you go and then it narrows back down to the point again. And I'm going to sew fairly close to that little folded edge that we pressed initially. So I'm just going to start at the beginning there. So I'm sewing right through the batting and the backing and everything. Holding. So and I'm just going to follow that curve around right on that folded back bit near the curved edge. Take my pin out when I get there. So this curves quite nicely. It's quite a natural curve when you're working with it and that's because we've done it on the diagonal so it's on the bias which is a bit stretchy. And I'm going to bring that right back into that point. And then I'm ready to turn. So you can do this, um, as I said, on a larger quilt with a walking foot. And because you're working diagonally across, because of the way I've set the blocks, you're just working diagonally across the quilt. It works well. It doesn't have to be uh, turned a lot. You're just doing a little bit of movement as you go. So the walking foot works really well with this. So I'm just going to come up to this point here and then I'm going to swivel around and come back so that you get the effect of the whole block. So this is where this bit of quilt can be rolled up to fit in your machine. You may want to pop your pins back in to come back down the other side. So your turn back should be much the same on both sides of this nice bit in the middle here. So that will naturally sit down quite well for you. It's a very cooperative form of uh, folding back fabric doing it this way. It just seems to want to do it for you. Opens up lots of possibilities. You could have all sorts of things going on in here. You could do some other embroidery, other features, other colours. As you can see, I'm not necessarily pinning everyone as I go. Once you get going on it, you find you don't really need to pin every little bit. So I'm now back where I started. And so what I'm getting here is some um, a lot of fun, a lot of texture. It can be a lot of colour, pretty much everything. And it's quilted as you, as you go. So I'm going to continue on doing that. You'll see that you'll get this. And when we come the other way, you'll get this chain. Because I've used the same colour everywhere underneath, you're going to get this blue chain going on. But if you have a look here, you can see that I've just rolled that back. So you've actually got a little bit of texture going on. It's a little bit of a flip up. If you didn't want it to do that, you could do another line of sewing. You could have all sorts of different 
um, things going on in there as I said or different colors and I just thought this was quite fun using two colors to a unit or three colors with your with your one showing through so this is kind of my version of the orange peel I thought it was quite good it peels back which is quite fun in the way of it being a peel it's appealing oh no it's bad today so I've got a couple of samples to show you and and as I mentioned right at the beginning it doesn't really matter what size square you start with this one here I've made up with all different colors for my background square instead of the constant um, like I've done the aqua there I've used some delicious oak shot fabrics here and and so I've got the gray for the main color so I've got two squares now these squares started out at two and a half inches square so we often have a lot of those in a stash or ability to have them so I've cut my gray into two and a half inch squares and then I've got all these other different colors as two and a half inch squares so where we had the unit I've got a color a different color for the background and then two grays um, for my front but it's just much smaller because they're two and a half inch squares and I've quilted it as I have gone through um, like I've just shown you on that larger sample so that you get this nice chain of different colors and things coming through the way I've done that one and I just thought that was quite fun but I have also made a larger one a sort of a lap size quilt which I sashed as well so I've used a white background and different colors for my squares so the two white squares to one colored square and they vary a little bit and I've sashed it as well so I've popped a little square in in the middle here um, in between so in amongst the sashing so where there's no um, colored square I've actually just still got a, a sashing square in there but I've got a white one so that I didn't want that to jump out and have a colored square there I wanted this chain to continue with the sashing but again I've got this lovely little bit of texture going on here and because this is larger I've quilted in between and around um, but all made exactly the same way this one was made with slightly uh, this might have been five inch squares too I would have started with um, I think four and a half inch squares on this one so not quite the five inch so just to give you a bit of an idea of how to have a bit of fun with that unit that didn't look much to start with that you can peel back those little edges and reveal something really quite fun and amazing so enjoy the appealing little unit <laughs>